Good afternoon. Whoa. Wow. Good afternoon. <laughs> this special meeting of council is called to order at 1.04 p.m. on December 8th. Council would like to acknowledge the Eklulathot First Nation on whose traditional territories the District of Eklulat operates. Notice of video recording, audience members and delegates are advised that this proceeding is being video recorded and broadcast on YouTube on, and Zoom, which may store data on foreign servers. Are there any late items today? Uh, seeing none, may I have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Seconder? Yes. Uh, any uh, further discussion? All in favor? None opposed, that carries. Uh, there is one report today uh, under 4.1, the 2023 to 2027 five-year financial plan overview. Uh, a verbal report from Donna Monteith, our chief financial officer. Welcome, Ms. Welcome, Ms. Monteith. Thank you. Kay. Joey, can I have the slide show? Great, thank you. So through the mayor, good afternoon, council. Um, I understand that you've now completed your um, orientation sessions with all of the management team, and I hope it provided you with um, a lot of insight into uh, the services that we provide and the level of uh, service that we have, and also on some level what the municipality is not responsible for. Just advance the slide. Um, <laughs> So uh, this is our first uh, budget meeting for the 2023 to 2027 five-year financial plan. So today we'll focus primarily on the 2023 operations um, with an introductory overview of the next five years. So no capital today. Today is also meant to open up the conversation about the challenges ahead in creating a balanced budget between service levels and capacity to provide quality service. Is my mic all right, Joey? I'm kind of fading in and out. Just back it away. How's that? <laughs> okay. I'll talk. I'll try right here. So although we aren't asking for any motions or decisions today, we're just hoping to seek some general direction from council uh, as we develop the full financial plan over the next few months. So thanks for uh, everyone putting time aside today. I want to thank the senior team for their participation and input into the budget. I think it's really important to have um, the managers uh, have the opportunity to present their departments as they're the subject matter experts. And there'll be lots of opportunities for questions along the way. Oops. So this slide is just a strictly legislation. It says that under the community charter, we must present a five-year financial plan annually and that it needs to show revenues, expenditures, transfers between funds, and it must be balanced, unlike a business. I'll start off with the budget um, public process and where we are in it. So on this slide, we're uh, right at the top. Um, and we're going to, we've compiled all the current operational data into slides for information and discussion. Then in January, we'll meet again, um, this time to discuss the capital projects and purchases. Then we come back again in February with a full draft of the financial plan and talk about taxation. Um, and then if council is good with it, you would direct us to proceed to the official public input period, which is set to end on March 27th, 2023. And we always accept respectful feedback anytime until March 27th um, to community input at uculet.ca. So that's our official um, email to receive public feedback if people want it to appear on the agenda at the regular meeting in April. Uh, once the public feedback session is over, um, 
council will receive it back in January along with all the feedback and then you would direct me to prepare both of the bylaws and then um, we hope to adopt by May, May the 9th and it must be adopted by May 15th every year. I just wanted to talk um, briefly about what happens internally, uh, kind of behind the scenes. So um, the senior managers review all of their operational and capital budgets, and they go through a process to reaffirm estimates for some of the existing projects, um, have a look at their actuals, and they start meeting with myself and our CAO, Dwayne. Um, then we come up with a draft plan. Uh, I package it, and then we come to where we are today at our first uh, our first meeting and uh, out in the public. Um, then in January we uh, are going to review the capital and the new projects, and this is at the time of year that we also talk about taxation. So a real comprehensive discussion, uh, including tax rates, ratios, and the cost of delivering services. Um, following that, we would go to the public input period. In April, um, we always also have the BC assessment revised role that comes out in the first week of April, and sometimes that uh, means that we have to come back and have another special council meeting because sometimes the um, the role can be uh, somewhat volatile, and it might mean that we um, have to look at higher tax rates or or perhaps a small adjustment down, which is what happened last year. And then we go into regular council meetings, so we do our first to third readings of both bylaws uh, in April, and then we adopt uh, in May. <laughs> I can't get this slide to advance. Pointing at your head, Joey. This happened to me last year. We were getting there. Are you able to advance the slide manually? Oh, excuse me. Try again. Oh, me? Okay. Okay. So the budget focus is generally the same each year. So we, we uh, confirm our core services and projects. And this year, of course, we have a new council. And then you'll undergrow your, undergrow your um, strategic planning in March, I believe. So that might result in some new directions, which could alter the five-year financial plan as well. And then, of course, we have continued discussions about asset management, addressing aging infrastructure, and new infrastructure required for our growth. And lastly, I did talk a lot last year about reducing our reliance on reserve funds to balance our core budget. So you're gonna hear, you heard about it in your orientation, you probably heard about it last year during the budget meetings, and you'll hear more about it in February. Um, but this is something that we absolutely need to work towards. We, we just can't use our reserve funds to balance our core services. The good news about that, though, is Council recently passed a policy and a bylaw to address reserves and surpluses, and that provides uh, myself and uh, Mr. Lawrence with a mechanism to start directing funds into dedicated reserves. Um, so this was a big step to align with the best practices, and all of those reserve funds are now set up. And then I just, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the significant uh, challenges that we have being a small town with big city problems. So um, this year, of course, inflation is affecting everything that we do. Um, it's resulted in increased costs for services, uh, materials and supplies in every department. Uh, we do have some supply chain issues uh, continuing on, although it is getting a bit better. Um, but if inflation's had a tremendous effect on the cost of our capital projects, so it's just it's just so expensive to construct anything, and sometimes it's difficult to even get three bidders on a project at this point, and because we're also a little bit remote. So you know we kind of ask ourselves at what point do we put projects on hold because the benefit to the community might be outweighing the cost uh, if we were to do things right now. 
And then we have rising interest rates. The interest rates went up again this week, um, which might be okay for some of our investments, but it vastly affects our ability to borrow money. And finally, uh, Uculet, of course, has been discovered, so we're having accelerated growth. And with that, there are increased service level expectations. So a lot of the people that are moving here, they have a very um, high expectations of a high level of service. So that's kind of the discussion with council is balancing what kind of service levels we think or, or you want us to provide and along with our capacity to, to be able to deliver that. And I was watching the news a couple days ago and, and uh, a 1% increase in our taxes equates to approximately $35,000. But a one and a half increase in taxes in Nanaimo gets you 40 firefighters and two new trucks. So I, I saw that in the news a couple days ago. So that's what I mean by having, we're a small town with the same big problems as, as another town, but um, that's just the, our base is small. And I'll just bring out the municipal core services. Um, I'm bringing it straight out of the orientation session just to list off um, some of the many core services that we have. And just a reminder that the core services don't include uh, one-time projects or any capital. I think this is my last slide as well. So I wanted to pull this as well out of the orientation session um, just to, to list off what kind of revenue sources we have. So the fees for services is, is of course trying to recover some of the costs of providing services and programs. So um, our recreation programs would be a really good example of that. I'm also taking advantage of the interest rates by placing uh, some of our funds into higher earning um, pooled investments under section 183 of the community charter. So we're getting uh, better, better rates up until April or May of next year. <laughs> we're very, very fortunate to receive regular funds, both provincially and federally, uh, whether it be um, a number of one-time grants. Um, RMI is a, a huge program and a huge help to our, our tourism factor. We receive a small communities grant um, every year it's based on um, population and uh, the Canada Community Building Fund, which is formerly uh, known as gas tax. So as a tourism destination, all of these uh, funds really help us proceed. And then of course we have property taxes. So for the most part, our property taxes go to support our operations, not all of it, but the majority of it. And again, we'll, we'll talk a lot more in detail in February about this as we proceed. And, you know, I'm a huge supporter of finding uh, alternative ways of uh, funding <laughs> the district. So I'm, I think you're going to hear a little bit more about other, other ideas that uh, our CAO may have <laughs> in the coming months. Okay, so enough about me. Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce the managers now to come up and talk about their operational budgets. And just as a, a general over, oversight, we, um, what we've done this year is, is we've provided you with what the previous council adopted for 2023 um, and then listed the new changes and what the changes uh, requests are and, and the new 2023 total. Um, We've really just tried to focus on finishing up what we've started. We're generally not trying to take on too many new things until council goes through their strategic planning session. Um, so that's kind of very conservative this year. We've kind of cut what we can, increased only what we feel we need to, um, and, and left it at that to see where it lands. So with that, we're gonna start with Mr. Gregg, Director of Community Planning.
thank you. And, and through the through the mayor, I'll just give a brief overview. Could I have the next slide, please? Or actually, oh, let's see. I should. No, I'm going run backwards. Other way. Here we are. So community planning and operations, or operations budget. Um, so uh, just briefly, and this is a bit of a bit of a repeat from the orientation session, uh, and but a, a reminder for the the uh, interested hordes of citizens who are watching online, perhaps. Uh, that our department includes uh, current planning, which is really the development applications, long-range planning, uh, property inquiries, land files, subdivision, building permits and inspections, bylaw services, uh, business licensing, as well as some of the public realm projects, which are um, sort of the planning and, and, and lining up the approvals in the land uh, and, and some of the design work around things like parks and paths and roads and some of the facilities. So, so a fair bit within our broad umbrella. I'll start with this slide uh, starts by providing an overview of the revenues uh, because we are one of the departments that um, does uh, collect user fees, if you will, or, or these are really application fees for the most part, and uh, which is, a, again, a source of non-tax revenue for the municipality. Um, so what was really adopted in uh, the last year uh, is on the, the left side of the, the column here. And um, it, it forecasted, you can see it, so forecasting, and again, this is always a forecast depending on what the activity is, $258,000 um, uh, in revenues for different application and, and, and fees. Uh, the actual to date, uh, we're at $334,000, so we're about 82000 ahead of what was projected. Um, so that additional would go into general surplus. You know, generally, we try to be accurate but conservative uh, in the estimates of these things. That, you know, that's an indication of how much activity we've had in the department. That, um, but that sort of conservative forecasting is is really, I think, the proper approach because a, a shortfall would be a problem. Uh, having a little surplus is 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 much less problematic. Um, so the changes uh, that we're we're showing in here are. Primarily, you'll see in the business license fees, so showing an additional um, $97,880. And that is really due to bylaw 1316, which was adopted by council, changed the fee schedule, um, particularly for the bed and breakfast fees. So the bed and breakfast license fee is now at $450. Is the base fee, it was $150 before. Um, so it's more reflecting what other communities and, uh, charge and also the, reflects the time spent on monitoring the, the bed and breakfast. And so also uh, some boost in the development applica application fees, just reflecting, you know, we look at sort of what's the average year to year, not the change in the fee per application, but just the volume that we've been seeing has been increasing steadily. So we're forecasting more to capture that. So uh, maybe I'll just pause. So essentially uh, what we were showing uh, in the 2023 budget was the, the 200 and uh, Fifty-eight thousand dollars, and and we've raised that by by almost hundred thousand dollars to show about three hundred, just under three hundred sixty thousand dollars in revenue. Uh, I'll pause and see if there are any questions on the revenue side of things before going on to the um, costs. Any questions from council? No, you're good to go. Okay. So the the expenditures side of the picture um, in round numbers are the department is is uh, you know roughly a seven hundred thousand uh, dollar piece of the budget that's about ten percent of the municipal budget uh, mostly in our department it's wages it's not capital physical stuff that we're uh, spending money on it's really the wages of the staff uh, within the department uh, a little bit of paper and ink on top of that but that's really about it so in 2023 uh, what we're showing and the, the the changes are this would be an increase slightly within building inspections. Um, so that was reflecting continuing the one day per week with the building inspector that's on contract from Tofino for this year. Uh, we were expecting they were going to claw him back and we wouldn't have the ability, but we do have the ability to access um, Mr. Henderson uh, one day a week for this year, which is a huge advantage. Uh, so we're showing that in the budget. And then the other one that we shaped up in here is really um, the, the, the main change for council to consider, I think, is uh, within bylaw enforcement. And so what is shown, what we're showing in the, the five-year financial plan and in the, budget, in the draft budget is it would, this would reflect the cost of adding a second bylaw officer uh, within 2023. Um, so that, you know, the total core then would increase by $97,000 in the 2023 budget. The, um, so really that, that, that question of adding staff, and this is, you know, other in 
I think sort of seeing how this plays out over other departments as well, um, that's it's really a balancing act and ultimately uh, determines the level of service that the different functions can, can provide. So for, for example, with the bylaw, you know, with one staff person, you really can't cover seven days a week. Um, so that's, you know, the kind of trade-offs that uh, are always the, the consideration at the council table. And uh, you know what we see in the summer uh, when things get busy with more sort of the interactions and nuisances and those sorts of bylaw issues, then there's there's less time for things like monitoring short-term rentals or processing business licenses. Any questions at this point? I don't see any. All right. So in the five-year uh, financial plan, the um, really what we're showing and starting to model, and this uh, each, each year is reviewed, obviously, um, that we're sh showing the impact of adding overtime staff. So that would be like within 2023, 20, 24. This, uh, this um, really reflects, you know, the bylaw officer, 25, 26, potentially another adding a planner, and uh, showing sort of at the far end, modeling sort of 26, 27, and another perhaps a half position within building inspections. And those are really very much based on what's the level of growth and activity we're seeing. We're putting them in the five-year financial plan to see how would they impact overall costs. Um, and But that's the sort of thing that we track very much. What's wh What do we see over the next couple of years? What sort of growth or development and demand do we see? And then the decision of do you advance that or do you put it off or maybe you don't need it. Uh, but we, we want to sort of at this point, I think it makes sense to to at least at least put them in there and see how it impacts the overall municipal budget. Pause. See if there's any questions on this one. So, and then the last uh, bit that I'll I'll cover in our department really is around projects. And so, in, in within the the community planning department, the projects are, are really not capital. They're not physical things. They're generally, um, so these uh, costs would be for hiring consultants where you need the added horsepower or expertise on some of the, the planning projects. So we have two carry forwards, really, the uh, the DCC's update and the subdivision servicing standards bylaw. Um, so they're shown still, you know, to be within this year's budget. And then two new requests, the OCP, this biannual monitoring, um, that is... Um, I'll just describe that. So like, that's really around monitoring the official community plan, the, the what progress are we making on it, essentially establishing a set of indicators. And there's been a discussion that we've had with Tofino and uh, the uh, CBT about essentially they're doing the, the vital signs report every two years. And so the two communities are talking about, well, what would it look like if they were also to you know, establish what are some standard uh, metrics or, or indicators that we report out on how are the municipalities doing so sort of have a page on Euclid and have a page on Tofino to to see you know are you actually doing the things you set out within your community plan and that that kind of approach of having some monitoring and reporting is, is considered a best practice for a community and an official community plan so so this is this is looking at well what what, what would it take to to do that work um, and and so there the OCP that was adopted uh, it, it does have a policy specifically saying We'll do this. <laughs> so when that happens, and the funding of it is really now part of the, the council decisions within the budget process. And um, the other thing uh, would be the housing needs assessment update. This piece, this is be, would be a sort of a partial or quick update. The housing needs assessment, which was presented in January of this last year, just the timing of when that happened and the census. The census data came after the assessment was done. So really, we understand that the province is going to be purchasing some custom data sets. I'm not sure exactly what <laughs> that looks like, but that that would have the information that we may have available to us this year to do sort of a quick refresh so that then the housing assessment, which is something that we're by legislation required to do every five years, it would now be aligned to happen with the census or right on the heels of the census so that in the future it would happen you know, every five years just after the census. So within the five-year financial plan, we're showing this kind of minor update for uh, this year, and then you'd see uh, within like, like 2026 doing a more fulsome update on that housing assessment for the community, which again is, a, is now a required thing by provincial legislation. And are there any questions? Because that really is our department budget in a nutshell. Councillor Hoare. Is the archaeological overview mapping really $25? I'm guessing it's a typo. 
I think it's missing a K. <laughs> 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 that, that would be $25,000, yes. And what exactly is that? So we have, um, so within our OCP, we have a map that is fairly broad uh, that talks about archaeological sensitivity and, and when do things need referral and, and attention. And on, on this peninsula, the likelihood of archaeological re and cultural resources is high on many sites. This would be essentially taking it to another level of having, having more detail. Um, looking to sort of narrow and be, uh, I guess, uh, to have mapping that would more accurately reflect where the true likelihood of finding sensitive or where they are known to be, have those resources so they could be protected. I, I should just note for anyone who's listening or for council um, that those uh, you know, archaeological resources are protected by provincial legislation wherever they are, whether they're known or not. Like if you run into something, it is protected. And that, that's a responsibility that's across the province for all property owners or contractors or developers who are, who are disturbing any kind of land. Uh, but having better mapping would, is, the, is the intent, um, that we have some good information that was provided to us, but it's very generalized um, that was you know, provided from the Ecola Thought. It's generally areas of older forest, anything around the shoreline, high sensitivity. So we have some very broad mapping. This would sort of focus in greater detail on it. So following up, that's something you'd probably be doing with Mr. Cunningworth over at Euclid thought maybe or it, it, it would be exactly it? whether it would totally involve the um, Euclid Nation in one format or another and may well be a consultant, consulting archaeologist to be sort of coordinating that work. And the 25,000, again, many of these projects, they're round numbers. We kind of shape them up at this point as we get closer to it. We see, hey, are there grants to help with these? And, uh, and also then get, you know, sort of quotes and more detailed numbers on, on actually creating that project and contract. Any other questions from council? I think you're good to go. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. And we will make uh, these corrections before it uh, gets posted on the website. Wouldn't it be nice if it was $25, though? <coughs> that would be lovely. I'm only good at math, not at spelling. Um, okay, so next we have our Director of Engineering Services, James McIntosh, and he's going to speak about water, sewer, and public works. Thank you. Through the Mayor, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. First up here is the sewer operations budget. Our core services... Yeah, Okay, that's easier to follow along. There we go. Sewer operations budget here. This covers inner core services um, activities such as testing, monitoring, maintenance, repairs, connections, 24 hour emergency response work, emergency planning, pump repairs, and treatment. All the activities that keep the sewer operations running. The revenue for this department is proposed for 617,890. The expenditures here, 586,585. And the total operating expenditures, 586,585. The changes here to note in the expenditures are 19,542 and that's a proposed new administrative clerk that's being spread out between these three departments and expenses. The sewer operations five-year budget. In 2023, as I mentioned, is $586,000, 585. And at the end of the five-year proposed budget, 661,717. So we see an increase of about 12% through that whole cycle. 
there any questions on the sewer operations budget? Thank you. No, none that I can see. Thank you, Mayor. Water operations budget. This ops budget. This operations budget covers activities like uh, purveyors of water. We, we sell water. Uh, testing, monitoring, provincial reporting, data collection, 24-hour response, infrastructure repairs, facility maintenance, pump repairs, connections, metering, flushing. The revenue for the for the water operations budget is proposed to be nine hundred and nineteen thousand dollars, two hundred and fifteen. The expenditures are proposed to be. Seven hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars, two hundred and twenty-three, and the total operating expenditures here are proposed to be nine hundred and seven thousand, two hundred and twenty-three. Worth noting, changes in this operations budget again is twenty-four thousand dollars, nine hundred and thirty-nine, to cover the new proposed administrative clerk. As well, there's carryover work here from previous budget, $70,000 for Signature Circle. It's a placeholder that we're waiting to see what happens next. As well as $45,000 for water reservoir cleaning. I've got a question on this one. Um, under your revenue, your water reserves goes it's you don't haven't got it listed as a change but it goes from 45,000 in the adopted budget to 115,000 just curious what that proposed change is <laughs> through the mayor yes i see that $45,000 in the adopted we add zero dollars and it becomes one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Can we help you out with that? I might pass that off to our chief financial officer, Donna Montes. Yes, that's no problem. Um, no, you're right. That uh, zero should read that there's an increase of seventy thousand dollars. So down at the bottom on the right hand side, there's a carryover project of seventy thousand. It's for uh, the money that we put aside for potentially. Um, Recommissioning signature circle. So I will make that change as well. May I ask why it's in water reserves? I mean, I get the carry forward down here, but it's so that I'm, I'm just curious. Um, yeah, so, oh, <laughs> yes, you do. Um, <laughs> so the water and sewer, the funds that we make in water and sewer, they actually stay in those two programs at the end of the year. And that's pr probably something I forgot to mention at the beginning of this conversation is um, the, those types of revenues for those two programs don't get collapsed into any other general government program. So for us, um, that's something that we can use directly from the water reserves to pay for that. We collected it last year and it's sitting in the water reserve account. Okay, so that's as opposed to Mr. Gregg's stuff when he has a, a bonus revenue that he doesn't need that goes into general operations. That's but correct. in this case, it can't. That's correct. The water operations five-year budget. We're starting in 2023 at 907,223. At the end of the five-year cycle, we're at 935,129. We're seeing a small but three-year increase across the five-year plan. I'm just going to be the question person at the end of the table today. Um, I'm curious. I noticed this on Mr. Griggs' slide as well. Um, there's 
quite a large difference between revenue and expenses in 2023 and quite a small one in 2027. Um, and I know that it was the case with the planning operations. And I'm just kind of curious why those are coming closer and closer to get there. Right. So the new position, most of the new positions, I'm thinking back to uh, Mr. Greg's slide, um, that bylaw officer starts, is proposed to start in the spring. So on the next year, you'll see a, a bigger jump because now we have to put that person in for 12 months. Um, whereas in in Water and sewer here you're seeing um, on this particular slide there's a it's higher for 2023 and 2025 because we have some reservoir cleaning in there. Also in 2025 we have a new laborer that's supposed to that's proposed to start in 2025. So a public works admin person in 23 and a public works laborer in 2025 spread out over all three of um, James's departments. Thank you. Thank you. Water operations, special projects, we touched on those briefly, but signature circle, $70,000 is being carried over, as well as $45,000 for reservoir cleaning. Public Works Operations Budget. This pays for expenses such as maintenance of municipal roads and sidewalks, repairs to municipal infrastructure, 24-hour emergency services, public realm projects, parks, path roads, etc., records management, facility maintenance, equipment maintenance, traffic control, staff admin, and other public inquiries. The revenue for public works operations budget is proposed to be eighty thousand dollars eight hundred the expenditures are proposed to be seven hundred and five thousand six hundred and one and the totals are eight hundred and four thousand six hundred and one I have a question on that one the top the top line says only eight hundred was budgeted for 2023 and you're changing it by 80,000. Can you explain that one, please? Yep, I might pass this off to Donna Monteith as well. <laughs> this is um, a new initiative in our resort municipality, our new RDS. So $80,000 of RMR, RMI money rather is being used for the winter lights and beautification project that was just um, passed recently I just signed the agreement for that so it appears on this slide um, even though we know it's it's more in in Abby's wheelhouse this is this is where it lives thank you any other questions from council not at this time no I'm changing my mind <laughs> <Counselor Hoare. laughs> well you took one of them I had to come up with another one uh, so I'm assuming that the decrease in public works admin is because you're no longer going to have to borrow a person. You're actually, because you're going to, you're hoping to hire in 2023 and share it between the three budgets, but I'm guessing public works has been paying out or was paying out. I'm not sure. I, I can explain that one. So last year council um, approved a position for public works to be split 50-50 uh, between two of his departments. So now that we're switching that laborer to a public works administration person, we, we're going to spread it between the, th the three departments. So that's why you're seeing a decrease in a couple of areas and an increase in the other. So it's, it's a wash at the end of the day, but that's why you're seeing those adjustments. All right, so the Public Works Operations five-year budget here. Um, the core expenses, we're starting at 705601 And at the end of the five-year cycle, we're proposed to be $786,710. So again, that's accounting for a new Public Works position in 2023 and a new labor in July of 2025. 
Are there any questions? I think I think you're good to go. Thank you, Mr. McIntosh. Thank you. So that eight, that little eight hundred thousand or eight hundred dollars is uh, the, for the sales of um, garbage tags. So that's all we got. So we need another way for Public Works to alternative revenue sources. Yeah. <laughs> I also just wanted to mention briefly. You're, you're seeing a lot of uh, asks for staff in most of the departments. We do have a slide at the end of this show that summarizes all of them that, that uh, Dwayne is going to speak to at the end. It will be a little bit easier probably for you to see all on one page. Chief Geddes. Good afternoon. Uh, just an overview of my world. Um, so services provided by the fire department include fire protection, fire training, emergency support services, fire inspections, and overall oversight of the emergency program in general. 2023 previously adopted budget. Uh, when it comes to revenue in fire departments, it's, it's often hard to predict. Um, there are variables, but there are some constants as well, such as our service agreements. Um, so this is a, a best guess. Uh, the, the unknown is the uh, EMBC reimbursements. So um, so best guess for revenue is uh, about $56,000, which was approved. And then um, $180,000 for fire admin, which is mainly wages for myself and the uh, proposed new position in my department. Training and retention, $53,000. Operations, uh, 138 and change. And that is uh, typically the day-to-day -day, uh, cost of doing business, uh, the expenses of, uh, of the equipment, of the uh, building, uh, fuel, insurance, uh, maintenance, things like that. And then emergency services, which is the emergency uh, program management. So a total core expense of 391500 That was a proposed adopted budget. And then some changes as we go to the second column there. Uh, total revenue. Under grants, you'll see 20929 and that uh, represents a fire smart grant um, that is carrying over uh, somewhat into the new year. And as we go down fire admin, there's actually a decrease in wages of $2,800, and that uh, represents the difference of, of monies not spent on our uh, dedicated training officer that we uh, that had retired halfway through the year, partway through the year, and he received a stipend. So that's the uh, leftover from that account. So that represents a slight decrease there. Training and retention, uh, requesting another $1,000 just due to the cost, cost of business. It's getting uh, more expensive every year to provide the uh, quality training. So we've asked for another $1,000. And fire operations, $19,000. Again, that's uh, those are the basic costs of, of doing business, the insurance, the fuel, the equipment maintenance due to, to some aging equipment and things like that. Um, so asking for a total increase of 17386000 which would bring our uh, proposed budget to $408,895. Um, do have some carry forward projects down below, such as a fire smart grant, 20000 and then under new projects, you'll see $12,000, and that is the uh, proposed uh, fire, hall, uh, fire, hall, fire services review that was uh, requested by uh, the last council. And there we go, there's our carried over items. Funded by grants uh, and the special project of the grant. So five year proposed budget. You'll notice quite a jump between 2023 and 2024, similar to the other departments in that my proposed uh, new position is due to start halfway through 2023, which would indicate only half a year of wages. 2024, of course, that would be a full year of, of additional wages for that person. So that's why there's, there's such a jump there. And then just incremental increases for the uh, remaining uh, of the five years. That's about all I have, unless uh, council has any questions. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions from council? Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so there's not a lot of increase in the revenue, and I get that the revenue is really hard to judge because how many call-outs do you get on the highway and how much reimbursement there is. And we know that we're certainly not reimbursed for the actual costs for doing those calls. Is there any sort of changes coming down the pipes about how those are paid out that might, you know, help your department's revenue stream? Through the mayor, um, the, the, um, the amount of money that um, we're able to claim on road rescue calls uh, is reviewed every year by the provincial government. It goes up incrementally, uh, not significantly, though we're talking a, a very small percentage. The other revenues are, are pretty constant based on the service agreements that we have that uh, are, are, are pretty constant for the most part. And, and uh, as I review all of these agreements, uh, and, and as you're aware, we have uh, some in the process of being reviewed. I'm, I'm looking at uh, ways that we can increase that funding, especially uh, as we go farther and head due to the, the cost of uh, uh, you know inflation in general. Thank, thank you, Chief Geddes. Pleasure. Um, the mayor, if I if I may add just a little bit on there, um, when we get into issue or items like this, this is when advocacy on behalf of council at UBCM uh, can be effective in bringing that uh, that issue up of compensation for responding to highway calls, which has a high cost to municipalities across the province. Um, so there is an opportunity that if this is something that is key and important to, to council to pursue a more equitable uh, cost sharing agreement for responding to incidents outside of our boundaries, uh, UBCM and advocating for uh, higher response costs or, or reimbursement at UBCM might be an option for council to consider. And which ministry would that fall under? Mr. Lawrence. Public safety, through the mayor of public safety. Great. Uh, Mr. Farnworth. <laughs> Thank you. Add that to the list of ministers we want to meet with. I have a feeling that at UBCM there was a resolution about increasing the, the return for particularly small municipalities that are covering large swaths of highway outside their district boundaries. And um, I feel like it passed. But we'll look that one up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I get it. guess that this one is me. Oh, I need the I need the clicker. Thank you. This one is myself and our corporate officer, uh, Joey Rotenberg. So I'll just um, start it off uh, perhaps with the, with the revenue streams that we have. So uh, not, much, uh, not much changes in the interest and penalties. That tends to be our returns on our um, uh, Municipal Finance Authority and uh, Wood Gundy accounts. I had already anticipated an increase in the adopted 2023 budget, so I'm, I was going to leave it at that. Um, our small communities grant is based on population, so when the new census came out, we are now receiving a new amount, so there's an increase of $93,000. That's an unconditional grant, so it generally pays for um, general government operations, so that's, uh, that's uh, that was a happy surprise this year. I have left the MRDT stuff in um, at 384,000 plus the 100,000 that we usually get for the affordable housing and shown it as a transfer down below in expenses. But um, I, I believe that TU will be starting to receive the funds directly um, next year. So I'm going to have, I'll just uh, check with them one more time to see when that's happening because it probably on the next round I'll just take that out and just show the um, the uh, affordable housing revenue going into the reserve fund So th our total revenue is uh, looking like right now at a, a million fifty four um, On the expenditure side I can I can speak to the the finance operations um, the finance is generally uh, our photocopier leases, our audit expenses, um, 
our intra our insurance for the entire district, which is over a hundred thousand dollars right there. Um, um, we don't have any bad debts or anything like that because people still have to pay. <laughs> um, so we're just looking at a $4,305 estimated increase and that's directly attributed to um, the rising costs of our insurance policy. And if I could pass it over to Joey, I think he can uh, talk about corporate counsel and uh, information technology. Perfect. Uh, through the mayor. Um, the corporate operating budget has an incredibly wide breadth. We have everything from payroll lines in there to the price of paper to um, it's just incredibly broad. So we do telephones, postage, contracted services related to corporate and finance services, legal support, advertising, human resources, stuff like um, staff training, recruitment, retention. So we have this incredibly broad category there. Um, I've been told that I should describe it as general governance. Um, so it's incredibly broad. Um, we're looking at about a $20,000 increase there. And that's generally associated with what we expect to be increases in our legal budget. We're budgeting about 15K additional for that budget for this upcoming year. Um, we've also seen cost increase in hardware. So cell phones are more expensive than they've ever been before, which just seems well to me. And we've seen other cost increases in, in that way. Um, so how else? Um, yeah, so there's also um, a moderate increase in our contracted services budget, which will be associated to this with the strategic planning that council is going to be doing this year. Um, and we're looking at um, increasing the amount of casual administrative support from three weeks in a year to 10 weeks in a year to try to um, fill some of the gaps that we've experienced in the past and to try to ensure that we have full coverage at the downstairs in the office anytime anyone's away sick or away on vacation. Okay, now moving on to the information technology budget. We are also looking at a moderate increase there. So the IT budget includes two elements. Um, we have support and then we have hardware slash software. What we've seen over the last little, wi little while is that hardware is more expensive than ever. We saw almost a $600 increase in some laptops. I, th I think I'm still on the same line here. Wait, we're still on front? Or is, is that what you're speaking to? So no, I'm speaking to the operating, um, corporate operating budget and then the information technology budget immediately below it. Um, so you'll see that we have a change from 2023 um, of uh, the 2023 budget of about $6,000 there on information technology. Got it, thank you. Of course. Um, so once again, we're, we're looking at a, a, a moderate increase there in that budget. Um, part of it is associated with what we expect to be a 5 to 10% increase in the hourly rate of our IT professionals. Um, and then the other part of it has to do with um, increasing costs of hardware itself. OK, so where are we? OK. OK. So now we're on to council's operating budget. Okay. So council's operating budget includes everything from council's payroll to its per, uh, to uh, meeting per diems associated with attending events like UBCM or meetings with other um, elected officials. It also includes um, a budget for economic development and council promotions. Council promotions are things like the mayor's lunches. Um, the previous mayor had uh, uh, attended the radio and gave spiels there, um, as well as the annual uh, staff banquet is funded through this account. Um, we also are including council IT support within this account now, because as um, iPads are used, there are more difficulties, and more difficulties equal greater cost. Um, also included in, included in this account are lo logoed outerwear. Um, three or four years ago, there were jackets bought for council members and for staff that had the district's um, logo on it. 
as well as like um, miscellaneous expenses associated with meetings and you know like things like the council's annual gift to other um, elected officials or you know if there's been a tragedy or whatnot um, this budget inclu also includes funds for council's conferences and education and uh, council dues, like subscriptions specifically that council has. For example, council has a membership with UBCM, which has a cost to it. Um, within this budget is also the grant and aid and in-kind and contribution program, as well as potentially the potential for elections and referendums like we had budgeted for this year. A um, Couple things to bring council's attention to on this slide. We are showing this slight increase in council conference meetings and trainings. Um, that's directly associated with the resolution from last council meeting associated with the number of members that would be attending. Um, it is very much offset um, by a, a minor increase in council's benefits, per diems, and salaries line. Um, generally what we're doing there is we're moving council per diems from one uh, budget to another because we had a little bit of space on council per diems in, in previous years. So we were able to um, offset the, f the funding ask um, within the council conferences by moving those per diems. We've seen some savings with council salaries as associated with um, the benefits package that council's receiving this year and the cost of the district associated with that. So um, obviously we have not completely offset that change, but we're in a better situation than we could have been. Um, the other thing that we're offsetting these, um, this account with is a decrease to council's economic development budget. We proposed in um, last year, for this year, to have a $35,000 budget, um, which is the budget that council's had for economic development, I believe, since 2019. Um, in 2020, 2021, and 2022, there was a commitment to the Chamber of Commerce to provide funding in the amount of $25,000 per year to the Chamber. Um, there was also a commitment of 10, 000, an allocation of $10,000 for Council 2, and I don't want to get the resolution off. Um, um, to commit uh, allocating of $10,000 per year for 2020, 2021 and 2022 for staff to explore economic development options, including the future location of Tourism Euclid. So Tourism Euclid has found a location and is well funded. So what we're suggesting at this point is to eliminate that $10,000 to off some, offset some of these additional costs that we have within this budget. Um, and council may want to consider what so, um, how they would like to, to fund the chamber in the future and if they would like to fund the chamber in the future. So that's $25,000 there that's, that's to talk about. Um, some of the things that council may want to consider is the community benefit the chamber's activities have as well as the process of awarding this funding and the specific deliverables associated with it. All things for council to weigh in the future to think about. Um, do you have anything to add there, um, Mr. Lawrence? Um, I think that, that covers most of it. It's, um, I, I believe that part of that funding was helped to offset the building operating costs for the Chamber of Commerce. And the Co uh, Chamber of Commerce has recently moved out of that building. Um, so I'm not sure if they're just homeless or not oper are looking at a new building. We haven't heard from them with respect to that. So there's an opportunity for us to hold this money uh, in the event that it is needed for economic development um, or look at utilizing it in other ways. Um, it also, between the, the 10000 for the uh, Tourism Euclid and the Chamber of Commerce, it's, it's a 1% tax increase, uh, and we have a lot of uh, demands on the uh, on on taxation this year uh, just through inflation and growth um, so it's a matter of whether or not there is uh, council is seeing significant value for the community in the use of these funds um, or does council want to consider alternate ways of, of using them or to to uh, offset the need for additional um, requ requisitions from property taxes uh, in 2023 moving forward. So there's there's some definitely some options for council to consider uh, with respect to whether or not that money is being utilized most effectively in its current allocation. 
Uh, I think it, it is good to have something in this account um, because I know the 10000 that was going to go to um, Tourism Euclid this year, we uh, reallocated it to the uh, Tolokwiat Tribal Guardians to um, maintain the back roads for the summer. Um, so that's a good example of having a little bit of a slush fund here to utilize in some way that we see appropriate. There's um, one thing also to consider, although it's ma a, a minor uh, GL adjustment, uh, <laughs> um, is if this is the suitable location for it under economic development specifically, or is it um, better off in... Um, an alternate funding line or grants and aid or something like that where council has a, already an inherent greater flexibility to utilize those funds so when listed under economic development that's kind of the that's where we're telling the community we're going to use the funds so if that's not where you're going to use them it's probably better to put them in an alternate GL account, and and that would be a, this would be a good time for us to receive some direction as to, you know, leave it here for ECDEV, or consider putting it in an alternate location. That's a good point. Thank you. I feel like I had a conversation with um, Sika of the chamber, and I believe they are functioning online now they don't have a physical space it's completely online so it's an awful lot of money to keep to help them out they, they are looking at an alternate space where the law office used to be uh, and I don't know how far along they are in that um, uh, endeavor but um, I think they are looking for a, another physical space If I may, um, shall I move forward? Okay, um, so generally speaking, we have two sort of broad categories of um, the projects ahead of us. So the 2023-20 year capital plan, which um, um, as well as the 2023s, um, as well in 2023 we'll focus on um, updating bylaws and policies within house. We have two asks though. The first is the website rebuild. Our website is coming to the end of its service period with our provider. Um, that'll be in 2023. It's really important for us to rebuild the website before that period comes to an end. Um, it helps to ensure the security of the website um, and it helps to ensure that we're in a situation to respond to challenges when they arise. Um, also, I think that our website needs some improvement um, so I think this is a great opportunity to do that work. Within this $35,000, um, there would be one piece, which is a needs analysis. What exactly do we need to get out of our website? So that'll be part of it. And then the other p part is the build. Um, the second um, item here, the 2023 records management. Um, some council members have probably seen this before. Um, what we're looking for here is a consultant to come in and review our practices and provide directions um, for the future. Um, that direction would include policies as well as a, um, uh, it would include policy documents as well as um, tailoring our current records management system so it really works for us. Um, and then drafting uh, information governance policies and assessing digital records systems and then providing a strategic plan with the long run goal of us going digital and our files being um, easily accessed. This process has a really nice little synergy with the website because if we build the website consecutively with our new records management program, we can ensure that the website and our record management program can speak to each other. Um, it will also make all of staff's jobs easier because it'll be easier for us to understand exactly where we're going because we'll better understand where we've come from. Um, so that's the pitch today. Um, the records management um, consulting could be pushed into the next, um, next budget year if that was more appropriate for council, but the website rebuild has to happen this year. So um, um, I guess that's my pitch.
and uh, um, maybe um, Ms. Monteith can speak a little bit to the 20-year capital plan. Sure. Uh, thanks, Joey. Yeah, I, I just, uh, that's, there's no cost associated with that. It's just uh, staff time, uh, largely between myself and uh, Mr. McIntosh. And I just wanted to uh, leave it up there in writing to um, bring it forward as we did last year, just to, to let you know that we're still uh, working towards coming, coming to council with a 20-year capital plan. But um, we also uh, need to uh, finalize having our assets um, condition reports and everything entered into citywide so that we can then create the uh, financial capital plan. All right, so this is the global, this is over the, the five years of the plan. Can, can I just make a comment about the um, <coughs> records management? Um, this came to us about eight years ago and it, uh, it wasn't with through a consultant though it was just a software program and it turned out to be a colossal waste of money so i'm really glad to see that you've got a consultant um, sort of wrapped into this project to uh, to actually give us what it is that we need so thank you for that um, through the mayor yet one size does not fit all um, and there is no silver bullet and uh, unfortunately i think that software can be perceived as the silver bullet, when really we need a system that works the way that our planning department, our engineering department, our parks department, our emergency response department works. Um, and um, I, I really do think it could be an incredible um, help to myself and, and to these departments moving forward. Excuse me. So this is us over that five year period. Um, so maybe, um, um, Ms. Monteith, is it okay if I just carry on with council and Infotech over the five years and then? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so you notice that council has sort of moderate increases over the five year. Um, Infotech, we're looking at a, an increase between 2023 and 2024. And generally those increases are associated specifically with renewals of software. So for example, in 2025, I believe we have to relicense everyone's Adobe accounts. And that's an expensive thing. Um, but what we've managed to do in 2023 is we've just gotten lucky. We don't have a ton of license renewals in 2023, but we have license renewals throughout that period in 2024, 2025, 2026, and 2027. So that makes for a little more money. Um, so um, the other thing that comes up from time to time is at the 2026, um, in 2026, we'll see a hardware renewal. So we'll buy new iPads for council. And that's one of those things that comes up. Um, the other thing we're planning to do or hoping to do in 2024 is we're looking at how we may be able to use the software that we use to build council agendas and, um, and minutes as a better repository for those agendas and minutes and for these videos. So that would come with a small increase in cost, about $3,000 annually. Um, where's the other one? Um, Ms. Monteith, could you speak to corporate and fi finance? Sure, I just uh, wanted to make a note about the revenue as well. You see a slight decrease in revenue in 2024 onwards. Um, we've, we've had a, a discussion um, regarding the apartment that the district rents. Um, we've, we've rented an apartment up on Forbes Road for two years now, almost two years, um, thinking that, uh, you know, nobody can find any homes and, and that we would have to temporarily house staff when they arrive until they find um, permanent housing and even created a policy around it. However, we're finding and we're thinking that um, we may not, we may like to drop the, the apartment. We, we did have um, our interim CAO stay in it for a number of months when uh, Mr. Laidlaw was here. And we had a, a contractor stay in there earlier this year. But we're not, you know, we're not, we did save on the accommodation, uh, paying for, for them to be here. But 
um, I, I, I think it's just something that we're, we're feeling that we might, we might get rid of in the spring. Um, it, it just, I, I don't think it's, um, following the intent and if it's not necessary, then, then why do it? It's so far, everybody that we've hired somehow, myself included, has managed to find a place to live. I don't know, no, know how, but we have, so maybe it needs to be their, not their problem and not ours. Um, the corporate and finance expenses. Um, so the 2024 does include the ask that Joey has for uh, an administrative uh, clerk to get some help there. Um, there's also the reduction in what we would be paying for that, that apartment, which is $2,100 a month. So there's very slight increases over the next five years, but, but really the, the big ask in the core is just for that extra person and some extra um, casual support in, in the office. So previously, we didn't fill anybody's vacation schedule, and we have uh, four different people working um, downstairs and out front. So when they go away, the work stops and uh, other people have to try and backfill answering the phones and, and assisting with customers. But everything that they have that they're doing, um, generally speaking, waits until they return. So we've slowly been adding uh, weeks of casual into the budget. So this year we had um, three weeks of casual admin support and now we're um, trying to raise the budget to 10 weeks. We find that it really helps uh, move along the paperwork while we're in this in-between stage where we're not quite ready to afford to hire a bunch of staff but it's sort of um, it's helping to uh, stop the gap. And um, but overall the the increases are, are not that much over the next five years for corporate and finance. I think that's it for for us, um, unless you have any questions. So I might have zoned out there <laughs> with the <laughs> special projects for eighty thousand. I think you mentioned it. But Those were um, uh, Mr. Rotenberg is just uh, advancing the slide back. So we've got the red website rebuild and the records management totaling 80,000. So we, we list those separately. Yeah, so that the, they, don't, they aren't actually part of the core budget. Is that the same consultant that does the website and the records management system? No, no, the, the website build would be different. Um, and the, it's one, one is a library expert, <coughs> library science expert, and the other is a right, right. Website build. Is there any benefit to doing those at the same time? I think there's synergies doing them at least consecutively. And um, at the very minimum, there's a great benefit for the um, website to be uh, developed in such a way that it's machine readable so that the um, cataloging that we do associated with the data management system can speak to the website. Thank you. I'm going to assume the large jump in the um, council costs in 2026 is elections? Yes, that's correct. Just confirming. <laughs> and, and it's because the elections budget actually includes the inaugural costs and as well as council orientation as well. Any other questions from Council? No, I think you're you're good to go. Okay, I can't believe we've uh, got to the almost the end already. So uh, our anchor is uh, Miss Fortune to talk about recreation, parks, and cemetery and small craft harbor. I was going to say she's the anchor. She's talking about the harbor. <laughs> oh, well done, well done, <laughs> done, done, done. Also, the shortest staff member, senior staff member. Good afternoon. Working on it. Working on it. <laughs> and someone's got the clicker. No, that, no, you're good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know I'll get this one wrong. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. And as Ms. Monti said, I've got a number of things to cover with you for right now. So let's start at the beginning with the anchor. Haha. -ha. So we do have the small craft harbor. 
in front of you and you've got the revenue increase as you'll see in the 2023 changes. Oh, I also want to start off just reminder to the, the Cape Marin Council that Small Craft Harbor budget is self-funded, so this does not come from taxes, and that's a very important distinction, to, I think, to make. Um, and as you'll see, our changes, the revenue and the expenses are basically the same. The Small Craft Harbor 7,000 change is actually a carry-forward in expenditures, and I'll go over that in a minute as well as 52 steps is one of our more special projects for this year. Where you see the revenue change in that area for 2023 is primarily strictly hydro fees. We put in, uh, Harbor Authority put in a new, wa not wage rate, a rate for, uh, ha for hydro, so we are actually properly realizing the revenue in Harbor, whereas before we were actually in a deficit. So that's the primary changes with those two. Any questions on that? Moving along. Oh, I guess I move along, right? <laughs> Let's see if I can make it work. Joey, help. Joey, what type of revenue? Okay, I gotta hit the right button. Hit the button. Hit. Hit. Ooh, got it for As I said, the carry forward from 2022 is the fish cleaning station upgrade. The reason why it didn't happen in 2022 is we couldn't find a contractor, so it looks like we've got someone online for this spring. One of the things we're also looking at this year, and, and our harbor master and myself had, had extensive conversations about this, is looking at 52 steps. 52 steps is a point of entry, and so that's something that we're hoping to bring back uh, for Customs. Customs, thank you for customs. And we want to look at that whole area. We want to do a bit of an engineering study for the ramp and, and the dock itself, looking at an arborist in the area. We actually own quite a bit of property back there. And we want to look at proper repair to the stairs and ramps. So we're kind of couching this together and working with DFO to see if we can get customs back. So those are our special projects for 2020 2023. Councilor Hoare? So, curious. You said we own a fair amount of property behind 52 steps, so not just where the, I, I kind of assume where it lands, as it were, the steps and it's things, but actually more than that? That is correct. It's something that I'm going to look into a little further as we move forward. So we, we do have, it's more than just the access area. It goes off a little bit to the left and to the right as you look on this up up the harbor area. So it's something we're going to look into and see if that's something we can come back to council on. This was something that came through with the harbor master plan to look at this space and see if that's something that we can make a little bit more our own in that space. So that's one of the projects that is proposed through the harbor master plan and we just want to put some funding to it to see what we can do. Well, I'll certainly vouch for the need for repairs to yeah. Some of that, and arborist not a bad idea because there's probably some danger trees that I can't even think about. There right. are, yes, that is correct. There's there's also a dumpster at the top of those stairs that is problematic during the summer. We've actually removed that. Excellent, thank you. We realized the issue. Speaking of which, <laughs> can I just uh, briefly ask what's involved oh, with the fish cleaning station upgrade? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, through the mayor, uh, Councilor Ma Lapti. Uh, we're putting in a stainless steel fish cleaning station and we're upgrading what we currently have in the space. So we've been doing some work with that area. We've also been working with the aquarium for signage. So we do have some signage that has been completed. And then we're tying, yeah, yeah I know, yay. <laughs> it's been a project and a half. And then now what we're trying to do is put a proper stainless steel uh, fish cleaning station in the area and upgrade it a little bit more. Thanks. Welcome. So in front of you, you have the core uh, budget, operational harbor budget for the next five years as through our budget process. You will see a slight increase uh, and we're essentially it's trending up in terms of mortgage in terms of revenue that we do receive for electrics and mortgage and water and the core expenses corresponding. Uh, with our harbor 
contract, the percentage that our harbor contract makes back is 42% of the mortgage fees. Any questions on that? All right, that's it for Harbor, and we'll get more stuff to you next week. All right, parks and cemetery. So the big increase in the big incre increase in this is we're looking at having a temporary. Pos uh, uh, sorry, let me start again. Find my voice. Sorry, my apologies. So we do have some minor changes in expenditures. You'll see under Parks Admin of $41,556 that we are requesting for a 2023 change for next year. And that will allow contracted services a seasonal position of six months. In 2022, we had a garbage collector position and that was COVID funded. And we are finding that we do need that type of individual to help with and support the parks department to ensure that we have a clean and safe park system. We're also proposing, uh, as Ms. Monteith discussed earlier, a casual position. When we do not have staff around, it does drastically affect what we can and cannot do and allows our core services to continue. With the cemetery up at the top of the revenue, we have some minor adjustments and the community garden. The reason why it's down is there's only a certain number of plots. So that's that end of things. And fleet, we're down a smidge uh, because we've got new vehicles, so we have less concerns with fixing the vehicles. Any questions for me on that one? Is the um, expenses for the cemetery, is that just upkeep or is that include some beautification? It includes beautification as well, yeah. Yes, that is correct. And it's something we've been working on a little bit more each year is to create more of a beautification and model on how we're dealing with the cemetery area. Any further questions? No, you're good to carry on. And as I discussed earlier, uh, the revenue is pretty steady, and it, it truly does depend on uh, the number of interments we deal with on an annual basis, so that could go up or down over the next five years. And our core expenses are primarily due to park its parks of men with a seasonal position, as well as a six-week casual. Any questions on that? CRD bike path for seven thousand on the previous page was that is that the extension between the so that's part of the contract services with ACRD they give ACRD uh, provides the district with seven thousand it's part of a contract so we we receive seven thousand dollars annually to help with things like uh, doing the ditches doing danger trees if there's repairs that we have to do on the bike path so that's what that is primarily used for you. you're welcome. The big jump in 2026 is, um, for I'm looking at the five-year budget here, where it goes from 836 to 895, and then it goes back down to 874. Uh, I sorry, I'm gonna look at Miss Monteith with I just saw I just saw that myself, and I'm not 100 percent sure to be honest with you. It's not elections. You've got oh. me on that one. Is there a new position in there? It sorry, it might it might be yeah, I think I think we were looking at a parks yes, in a parks labor in parks four labor. years. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That's what that would be. It's not on the staff side. Okay. Okay. We'll track that down. True. Works for me. <laughs> Advanced planning is always good, right? <laughs> All right. 
So in front of you, you have the recreations operations budget, sales of service, grants, RMI funds, and that's that's one of the big jumps there is when the budget was done for 2023, we did not have RMI funding at that time, so that's one of the reasons why you'll see that jump. And the, and the reserves is the carryover that we've had from this year to uh, paint this the community center, the front side, which we were not able to do because of trying to find a service contractor. We do have someone signed up and ready to go for the new year, so we're very excited about that. Uh, sales of service is primarily our rec programs. We're doing quite well. And so we do, we do anticipate, and that's actually a conservative number, we do anticipate an increase along that line just to sh show you what we've been dealing with in the last couple of years. So you're, it's okay. So 2019, obviously we did not have COVID, or if we did, we didn't know about it. And 2020 and 2021 were harder years for us to deal with. We still had some programming going on, but obviously events did not run and our rentals was down ex quite significantly. So the 2022, as you can see, we're trending back upwards. We're very excited about, and that's actually, the 2022 numbers are only six months because we did not start full time until the summertime. So we're feeling pretty, pretty good about those numbers as we move forward. Correct me if I'm wrong, but those, I mean, even the rental numbers are up yeah. over, up to what pre-COVID ones were, right? Yeah, or above it. that's correct, Councillor Hoare. Um, yes. We're busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll just interject for a quick second. That uh, question you just asked about the park slide, we've transposed two numbers. It should be uh, 859, not 895. So I will make that correction. Very good eyes. Thank you. Almost got my new staff person <laughs> for one year. <laughs> or half a year, yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right, moving on to Rex Operational. Uh, so let's go through this. So top line Rec Admin. Uh, again, Rec Admin is looking for casual as well. If we have any one of our front staff not available, it does make a significant difference to our front area. So that is casual, casual um, staff. And then facilities and fleets, that's primarily due to cost of doing business these days as well as cost of getting gas these days. So that's what your primary there. So in terms of expenditures for activities and programs, I have bumped up the cost, but there's also the corresponding revenue that goes with it. As I discussed with you on Tuesday, the way our programs op operate is, <coughs> sorry, my apologies, is our, our program contract staff take a percentage of the, the total program costs, and then we get the corresponding admin. And events are RMI funded, and so again, the corresponding revenue will be coming in. So that's the primary difference for that, for core expenses. Is there any questions on that? Just wondering what the uh, 90,000 carry forward for projects is? Or does it say uh, it on the uh, next, slide? next slide? Next slide, sorry. <laughs> One moment, please, as my husband would say. Uh, and you, yeah, and I actually, I will just flip to the next slide. And oh, actually, before I do that, I just one thing I wanted to talk to you about quickly is where you're not seeing an increase is we are looking at our play school program which is previously our uh, play school instructors are paid through via taxes with some offset from the program. We're no, no longer operating that program. We're, we're doing other early years programs, but not that specific program. And so from that, uh, we save 23K, which was essentially the cost of having a janitorial, that janitorial position back, which has previously been COVID funded for two days a week. So we've got a bit of a wash going on there, so I think it's gonna be a very positive way of moving forward. We do find that having that additional third person for two days a week so that we have full coverage makes a huge difference in terms of the services, uh, janitorial services we're able to provide. 
Any questions on that? Now I, now I can answer your question. So I'll carry forward as I discussed uh, the south section of the exterior of the building, our weather section for lack of a better word. We are looking at doing the junction uh, sign out at the uh, out of the junction, it needs a little love. Wayfinding is a carryover to put the actual equipment in. And we do uh, we did receive two years funding for the bilingual signs for RMI, so we'll be having more signs out on the streets. And one of our new projects is the heritage signs and signage for 2023. Any questions? Do you know what the heritage for 2023 is going to be yet? Do we have Maybe. <laughs> Working on it. I'll get, I will get back to council and let them know what we're looking at doing. Got a thought though. All right. And last but not least is the, f uh, the five year operational. So we have the sales of service, which is pretty steady. We have grants. Oh, the, our grants that we all have is the, grants such things as the Canada Day grant, the um, youth grants, we have a lot of youth grants, as well as family day grants. And this year our grants uh, were excess of $11,000, but we put in a conservative amount on an annual basis. And I do have the answer of why there's a huge difference between 2024 and 2025 is we only have RMI booked in until 2024 which I'm sure we'll get it back, but this is what we have to do for budgeting purposes. Is there any questions? On the grant subject. Yes. Do we get grants for Yuki Days too? Are there some available or is it just things like mm -hmm. Canada Day, things that are a little bit more kind of national or? That's correct. We do receive $20,000 from RMI that helps offset our costs for for Yuki Days, and in uh, 2024 is our 50th anniversary. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Any questions? None at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abby. That was very good. Uh, Abby gets the gold star for um, switching out staff without <laughs> asking for new for new money. Um, <laughs> well done. And you know, I just, I just uh, want to say that this is our, this is our first um, pass at the operational budget. So this is, we've given you a lot of information today. Um, we're going to talk a, a little bit more about the overall budget in a minute, but I, uh, we've prepared a future staffing slide for you because everybody needs, needs and wants new staff. So uh, Dwayne is going to speak about that. Yeah, I got this one. Uh, thank you, Mayor Council. Um, so oh, we have to click. Sorry. There we go. So um, for moving forward for for staffing, we're we're trying to be as conservative as we we possibly can. Um, we've had a couple of things that have come up um, over the. It, from transitioning from the COVID funding to new funding. So there's three items right in the middle there, the bylaw officer for 2023, the uh, part-time janitor and the park seasonal. Those were all previously funded through COVID funds and that was special funding for recovery related to uh, COVID-19 that came through in 2020, 2020. 20 uh, and then flowed through until the uh, the end of this year so uh, what we're asking for council at this point in time is can give consideration um, of continuing on with those positions they are unfunded positions so that they would need new money to fund those um, the first three positions that we have on there were proposed last year uh, and they were gaps uh, in uh, our support systems uh, that were identified. Uh, the deputy or assistant fire chief uh, to provide additional support services to meet the objectives of the uh, emergency services and fire department. Um, our public works, we've done a little bit of a shift here. There are originally two laborers uh, proposed, one for 2023 and then another one for 2025. Um, we've 
identified that yeah, we, we still need additional boots on the ground uh, support, uh, but what we need even more so is administrative support. So our operations department is a department right now of one. So all of the operations from ordering <laughs> to uh, looking at contracts to doing capital projects to overseeing the staff right now is uh, is Mr. McIntyre. Um, so that is not really achievable. There's there's gaps there, and and the uh, demands on that position are just are, are too great to continue on that way. We we are still trying to fill that p manager position um, because we have one uh, long term employee that's off on long term disability. Um, we're posting again for a. Uh, manager position for operations which will provide a significant amount of support for it uh, but it's still a temporary position at this point in time so that one's right on the edge of whether or not we can uh, successfully fill it uh, because we need to look for the right person to fill that and help support that team even with that position uh, the workload in that department is such that it needs administrative support um, so we felt that transitioning the labor position to a administrative clerk position uh, would provide that extra help um, and we'll actually see some benefits there financially for us because of the billings and um, ensuring that uh, new development uh, DDCs etc um, are built out uh, uh, to the to uh, to our best advantage so there will be some positive change there um, the other positions are our new asks uh, and there's one thing that we're trying to do here is you'll see down at the bottom there is uh, a lot of casual weeks so before we propose a full-time position uh, we're gonna try to use or we're proposing to use more casuals to fill in the gaps, keep the systems going. Uh, we can no longer sustain ourselves by uh, letting positions be vacant while people are off ill or off away on holidays because the workload just piles up and there's no catching up anymore. It used to be that we could do that. Um, it's just not the case anymore. So those casual hours will give us that buffer as we grow to maintain the service levels for the community and keep applications flowing um, and ensure we're continuing to provide the quality of service that uh, that is expected of the municipality. Um, moving forward, there's the admin clerk for corporate services. Um, that one is, uh, I think, very important for us to consider moving forward here. Um, we're getting more and more demands um, from Freedom of Information requests from a uh, specific organization, which we expect uh, a significant increase in in the long term, um, which, um, as, uh, as uh, Mr. Rottenberg will attest to, this is very, very time consuming and we have to legally respond to them. So the demands on our corporate services are increasing greatly um, and we need to be able to respond uh, to meet our obligations under the legislation. Um, a planner in 20, uh, sorry, 2025, I, again, um, this is all about service requests. We're going to be doing a little bit of an exercise in January and moving forward with our planning department to see if we can streamline a bit. There's definitely opportunities for council to consider delegating authorities, which will speed things up, uh, especially in the report process, which takes a lot of time. Uh, that'll be coming forward in, uh, in January, February for council's consideration and discussion. Uh, but we anticipate with the amount of new developments on the horizon that the demands on our planning department are going to grow and grow and grow, <laughs> which also has a trickle uh, uh, outward effect on our operations, our park teams, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, administration, finance. So um, that's that's going to have an effect. And then the last piece is a a half time shared West Coast inspector. Now uh, this is a, a floating one. We wanted to put it on horizon for council. Um, primarily because uh, we have our new full-time building inspector and municipal inspector which is uh, helping achieve a lot we're we're working well with that um, 
in five years, again, with the amount of development that we're thinking we're going to see, there's a good chance we're going to need that additional position, but probably not full time. Um, the flip side to that is putting a half time position out there is not, it, you know, how do you fill it? So what we're proposing is working with Tofino, possibly Area C, um, the First Nations governments, to partner with them in another full-time position, which is shared. Um, we've had some success th with that, um, with uh, with Nick, I can't remember his last, Henderson. <laughs> um, so there, there, is, um, there is good merit for that, and there's a benefit that we share the costs of a building inspector and can actually attract one that's full-time permanent uh, for the West Coast and then share the actual costs. That one is, it might get pushed out year to year as we go along, depending on need and development. Uh, you never know what the markets will do. So although we're see receiving a lot of interest right now for new developments and new subdivisions, uh, that might slow off. You, you just never know. So um, some of these positions like the planning and the, uh, the part-time um, West Coast inspector uh, might get pushed out um, if, uh, if they're not required. So that's uh, if if any if council has any questions about the staffing um, overview here, I'm I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from staff or for, sorry from council <laughs> for staff, Councillor Hoare? Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong. From what Ms. Fortune said, so the part-time janitor position would actually be covered by the savings that we have for the child care thing so that that would be a wash even partially yes it, it'll it'll cover uh, some of it um, we're finding that we're not filling that position and we we haven't been able to fill the position and the program hasn't been because of that we can't do the program so rather than keep that on the books and keep the money on the books we'll just transfer that over to to that uh, two-day plan or part-time janitor position Any other questions? No, nope, looking good. Uh, and just a point of clarity, I'm I'm hearing from seeing from council. There's there's no significant objections to the to what we're proposing at this point in time. You know, we don't need um, official guidance at this point, but just to get a feel for how council's feeling for what we're proposing. <laughs> Councillor Hoare. Well, I think you know me personally um, we need that second bylaw in the summer because I can't even tell you how many people I see camped in the wrong places um, and I know how important the six month <coughs> garbage collection thing was because that takes something off the parks workers so they can actually do all the other things that they need to do like there's those positions that were funded by COVID um, became pretty important in around here so that we could provide service so that I see those as being pretty pretty vital and uh, and honestly Mr. McIntosh you cannot be um, spread as thinly as you are without some help totally get that and it's hard to argue with fire services because things burn unfortunately I think it all has a lot to do with the uh, levels of service, as Mr. Lawrence mentioned right at the beginning. And the more people that come here and move here uh, are expecting that, that higher level of service than what we maybe have been giving them up to date. So yeah, I'm, I'm fully supportive of all this. Thank you. Shall I continue? Okay, getting to the end. Um, this slide um, is our core services, our core revenue for all of the departments that we have. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, where are my notes here? So it looks like compared to 2022, 
the um, adopted budget for 2022, we're actually anticipating a $120,000 increase in revenues for um, between 2022 and 23. And I just wanna quickly slip to the next slide here because it's the expenses. So um, the expense slide, when I take that total on the bottom left of 7.08 million, last year's operating budget was 6.8. So now we're coming in at 7.0, so it's about $200,000 more in expenses. But we're also expecting 120,000 more in revenue. So um, when you take out the special projects and only look at the core services that we're providing, we've come in with a fairly conservative budget looking for about $80,000 more that we have to find to cover that. Um, so it's it's, it's very um, conservative. We've cut as much as we can while looking at um, adding more staff to get more things done. Um, so I'm actually, I'm pretty impressed that uh, the management team's been able to, to make things work and try to uh, rob Peter to pay Paul, as it were. Um, and it's also uh, 120, or 80,000 is actually quite a bit lower than uh, inflation right now. So. Um, I think we've done uh, pretty pretty good so far. It's about three percent. Um, the speaking of inflation, I, I, I think I think next year's budget. When we do this again next year, it's going to be a lot more. Um, it'll be a lot more interesting because we we don't know what um, inflation will be sitting at next year. Uh, we'll be entering into uh, QP negotiations next year as well. And we just don't know what the economy is going to do. So we, it was really important to us this year to kind of just try to come in with a status quo uh, budget as much as possible. D do you have any questions on the two summary slides at all? I did get the math checked. <laughs> <laughs> they look good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so then we just have a, we wanted to uh, list the special projects on a summary slide as well. So we've put the funding sources beside each each one. The, the CFW means uh, carry forward, and the other ones are all new or ongoing. Um, most of everything on that slide is already funded by RMI dollars or reserve funds or harbor fees or general reserves, which means that we already collected taxes to pay for it, and it's sitting in our reserve money, so we don't uh, collect twice for the same thing. Um, so you can see that the one, two, three, four new asks are on there, which would be um, tax dollars as well. So when I say we're looking for 80000 in core operations, that's quite different than this slide. So sometimes what's what increases the tax requisition is the, the special project so when you start adding up um you know fifteen thousand for the ocp biannual stuff um, the fire services review the website rebuild and the records management consultant your um that's when we start looking at what what how can we spread this out can, can we apply for any grants to cover any of this stuff we start looking at things like, well, what about the uh, Barclay Community Forest Fund? What does new council uh, want to do with that? I know um, we need to, uh, we had a committee of the whole meeting last year, but it's a new council now, so perhaps that needs to come back so um, we can get some direction on how uh, maybe those funds uh, want to be delivered in the future. Uh, but for now, this is what we've got, we've got and it's um, a summary slide of all the special projects. Any questions on that? None at this time. Okay, last slide. Um, so in uh, January 19th, we're gonna come back and we're gonna deliver the um, capital projects. So there'll be existing capital projects that we have on the go as well as, as any um, new ones that we've identified. Um, that one uh, usually is a bit longer. Uh, there's a lot more questions when it comes to capital projects. Um, so I, I would anticipate a longer meeting for that. That could have some uh, impact on our taxation as well if, um, if there's any decisions to be made about any of the projects that might require a, a uh, contribution by the district. 
And then February 23rd, we're going to come back and we'll have the whole budget um, packaged together for the, the whole five years. And then we'll be able to talk about that and what the um, how much money we need to collect in taxes. We'll have the um, completed roll that comes at the end of December from BC Assessments. I'll have it all in the spreadsheet and all figured out. So generally what I like to do is come in with some examples of what different tax increases might look like and how you might want to um, have it spread out. We don't know what uh, the town of Euclid looks like in terms of BC assessment uh, valuations um, next year. We haven't received that information yet, although the news is saying that everybody else will probably go up again. Um, Abby's bowing her head, yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, so that'll be a fairly significant meeting and then we'll get some direction as to whether you want to send me back to the drawing board to sharpen the pencils some more or go straight into some public feedback and then maybe make some edits after that. And, and again, I just uh, want to reiterate in April, the first week of April comes out the revised role. Um, and if it, it didn't really affect us too much last year, but it has in the past if BC assessments makes a, a large adjustment or if some of the appeals go through, um, it, it could affect what we, what we need to ask for. So um, I just really wanted to spread it out. Last year we tried to condense it a bit, but we'd also been together for four years. So um, we absolutely don't mind having as many meetings as we need to, to uh, have council feel comfortable with the five-year plan moving forward. Any questions? No questions. I should know this. Well, when do we, what, BC assessment, I'm just trying to remember, when does that come out? When do we? The, the, it comes out in January. It, uh, the, um, your assessment will be mailed to you from directly from BC assessment. You can also look it up online at that point as well. Any other comments from council? Just can we revisit the potential to have the budget meetings not at four o'clock as they were originally scheduled? Yeah, absolutely. We can, um, it's council's choice as to what time of day uh, you would like to meet and, and, and even what day. I, I do remember that conversation, but I believe Councillor Mafti wasn't back in the country yet, so. Thanks again for accommodating me, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't bring me a pet penguin. <laughs> that's doing you a favor trust me <laughs> fact no i had just asked if you know we didn't know if it worked with your schedule was to have meetings that were not starting at four and especially because i know things like the capital projects meeting they go long and if you're starting at four then you're mm -hmm. late as opposed to taking the afternoon if that works for other people because thursdays are a day that i have off so it's a day that i'm i'm available at whatever time but just throwing that out there pretty flexible yeah, we were waiting to sort of get your opinion. You're pretty flexible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Try to be. <laughs> okay. That looks good. So Great presentation. Thank you very much. Pardon me. Um, through the mayor. So, am I hearing that you'd like to have the January nineteenth meeting moved uh, to one p.m. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just ask because we have to give notice. So. <laughs> I'm hearing yeses. <laughs> okay, we'll make it happen. Thank you. Okay, no further discussion. We will adjourn this meeting at 2.57. Thank you.